Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm going to be teaching you some more Quixel Mixer. So, in the past, the Quixel Mixer videos I've did have been strictly mixing textures themselves and putting them into Blender, but today I'm going to be actually teaching you guys how to mix a texture on a 3D model to use an existing texture from a 3D model that you might have downloaded that doesn't quite fit your scene, and you just want to change the texture up to fit it more. So, the first thing we're going to want to do... Um, to import an actual model into your library is go up here to this little library tab up at the left click it and then click import assets from folder and you don't have to do this with mega scans you can do this with any model that has textures just make sure uh, the object file like the actual mesh and the textures associated with it are in there and make sure that the texture names all match up with mixers like texture setup so basically like underscore color underscore albedo underscore bump underscore nrm stuff like that uh, just make sure your textures are named right and stuff like that but i do have mega scans so i'm gonna just do this so i'm gonna go on my mega scan photo uh or not photo but library and stuff and i'm just gonna open up like wood log um and then select the folder and so once you do this, it might take a little bit depending on your model, but um, it will import. Just give it a second and I'll be back once this imports. So the asset is imported. That only took about 15 seconds. Um, but if we go into my local library now, you can see that this is the model that I imported. And so I'm going to click this and then click load. And it'll load the mesh up. And once it loads the mesh up, you just give it a second. And now we have our mesh right here. So this is our mesh now. Um, you can see that it's here. Everything's textured and everything. So uh, now what we can do is we can import a surface. Now I already have a surface that I'm going to use, but I don't have that one specifically installed now. But I'm going to use. I'm just going to import a random one that I have uh, just to show you guys how to do it. So basically, you would just go to Import Custom Surface, and then under Diffuse, you would click this folder, and then go to wherever you have your surface downloaded. Uh, I'm going to go to surface right here and then grass dried and then here's the albedo I'm going to open this and if you have this auto populate little button down here checked uh, once this loads up it should auto populate with all your stuff um, so uh, sometimes like you can see right here under metalness it'll give um, it will uh, give the wrong texture so uh, basically you can just like not really use that um, yeah uh, so basically you don't really have to worry about that unless it's like an actual texture that you have that's in the wrong place then you can just replace it but this won't really um, affect it much and then we can click next and we can just put the areas like one by one and then just name it like grass category you can select any kind of categories that you have here I'm gonna select ground and then we can adjust the height of the displacement. Now I'm going to do like 0.5 and a tag. You can enter like grass or whatever your surface is. And then just click import. It will import your maps. And that's basically how you do it. So now if we go to my local library and then we go to surface and then ground. We can see that my surface is here. So um, I just imported that by accident. So I'm going to right click it and then click delete layer. But I have a, a surface that I'm going to use and it's this wind windswept snow. So I'm just going to click this and then it will load it in. And once it loads the texture, it will overlay on top of the wood. So now we have this overlaid on top of the wood, but right now it's all white. What I'm trying to get for this is imagine you are making a snow scene or something like uh, out in a cabin in the woods and you have this like chopped wood pile obviously just the straight like wood without any snow on it wouldn't be very realistic for that scene so that's what I'm trying to go for here as an example so we have these sliders over here once the texture is overlaid right now the texture is pretty much completely overlaid and you might want that but a lot of times you probably won't you probably want it to be like mixed in actually so uh, with these sliders if you notice that we can move them however much we want right here and nothing will happen so the reason nothing's happening is because the blend mode is set to opacity masked. If we change that and click from above or from below, uh, we can change the slider. So if we click from above and then we change the threshold, or if we click from below, 
Um, that basically just shows if it's coming from below or above the texture. So if we click from above and we change the threshold, this shows how much is actually like on it. And then we can change the radius too. So something like that. And we can change wrap to underlying um, if you want it like thicker. Uh, blur underlining, that basically changes the detail of the mesh. It blurs it out. But yeah, we can change the uh, basic detail of this. And the placement, we can change the placement of the texture uh, with this little placement thing. And basically we can just move this around if we want uh, to kind of get it because um, sometimes it's not how you want it. So I'd say that's pretty good. That looks kind of good. It looks like the snow's falling onto the logs. Uh, we can also change uh, the projection type. Uh, but I'm going to leave mine on box projection. And then you can change the radius of this too. Uh, I'm going to leave mine about right there. And then you can change the height influence. Which I'm not really sure what this does. It doesn't really look like it's doing anything. I could be completely wrong. And then you can change the scale of the texture. Um, so I'm going to put the scale about 1.4. And now we have this. So once we have this, what we can do is we can go over here to this export tab. And once we're on the export screen, basically just click create subfolder. That'll create another folder inside of your export folder. You can change the surface name. I'm going to change it as snow underscore log. Um, and then you can change your export format to whatever you want. I'm going to use PNG. Export resolution. I don't recommend going anything under 2K. Um, if you have something way off in the background, um, and you're using a texture for it, you can go lower, but anything that's like in view of the camera, I go any I wouldn't go anything lower than 2K. Um, if it's really close, you can go 4K or even 8K. Um, if you use 8K, make sure you have a lot of VRAM on your graphics card, otherwise Blender will like crash and not be able to render the scene. But once you have all this set up, make sure all your maps are selected that you imported at the beginning for your texture. Um, if they're not all selected, just select them, but they should all be selected. And then you can click down here, export seven maps, and then it'll export all your maps and all your textures and stuff over to your folder. So if we go back in my Mega Scans folder, you can see I now have a folder in here called Snow Log, and it won't import the model. Uh, you'll still have to like texture the model itself. But you can see now if we open the Albedo, for example, and I bring it over here, we can see that now there's like the snow mixed in with the log texture. So now all we have to do is just go and open Blender. I use the Steam version. Everybody bullies me for that, but I don't care. All we have to do is open Blender, hit Delete, and then File, and then Import, and then whatever file um, type you have, OBJ, FBX, uh, whatever you have. I'm pretty sure mine's an FBX, so I'm going to go to my main drive where my mega scans are, and then click Downloaded, and then 3D. And it is wood log, and I'm gonna pick LOD3 because that's a good mix. And we can see that we have our logs here. I'm gonna scale it up since I picked LOD3, it's not a lot of geometry. You can see that a lot of it's blurry, but the textures will take care of that. And then all we have to do is hit Control A and then apply the scale. Um, it's good to apply the scale because uh, once you scale something up or down or scale anything anyway. Because that basically resets the scaling back to 1 um, on the item. So you can see that we have it 1. If we scale it up, we can see right here. But if we like click Control a and scale, it sets it back to 1. So I'm going to rescale it back down, Control a again, and then apply scale one more time. And now we have this. So how to apply the texture. So go up here to the top left, or you should go up here to the shading tab. But I usually do this because it's just what I do. But go over to the top left, click this, and then drag. It will split the window. And then go all the way over here to where this little ball and grid is. Click this, and then click Shader Editor. This will bring you to your Shader Editor. So uh, some 3D models already have this normal map node right here. You can just delete that because we're not going to need it. It's going to do it automatically for us. And the first thing we're going to do is go up to Edit, and then Preferences, Add-ons, and then type in Node Wrangler. And make sure Node Wrangler is set up and then click save preferences so what node regular does is it makes dealing with nodes in general a lot easier but it's very very handy with texturing 
For example, if I wanted to add a texture, you can click on the principal BSDF and hit Control T, and this will bring up the entire texture setup thing. But we're not going to do that shortcut. We're going to click on a principal BSDF and click Control Shift T, and this will bring up this little principal texture setup. So what this is is we can go into our main drive or wherever you have your texture saved, and then your folder where you have it saved, and then go back into it, and then hit A to select all, and then click Principal te Texture Setup, and you'll notice that it gives us all of our textures already set up, already mapped, completely like effortless. So this saves a lot of time texturing and stuff. And one thing we have is we have this displacement node. So what displacement does is it tells Blender to actually move the objects. And what we can do is actually what I'd probably want to do if we're using displacement is import a higher poly model. So I'm going to use LOD0, which is a very high poly model of this. If we hit tab to go into edit mode on this object, we can see that we have a lot more um, geometry. So what displacement does is it basically tells Blender um, to change the geometry based on um, like white and black values. So like light and dark values. Um, it's either blacks are inset and whites are like outs or the uh, vice versa. I'm not really sure, but yeah. So now we have these logs. It has a little bit more polygons so we can use this placement a little bit better. And one thing that I would also add is shift A and then add an ambient occlusion node. And then just put that right in the middle of your diffuse texture and then principled. Or what you could also do. Um... Yeah, just do this, actually. Um, just click Ambient Occlusion. And what that basically does is it basically tells Blender or tells the 3D software where shadows should be. So once you have that, uh, what you can do is make sure you run Cycles because with Displacement, it only works with Cycles. Eevee doesn't do that yet. And we go to our Materials tab where we have our material. You can rename the material to like Snow Log or something or whatever your material is. And then go all the way down um, and click settings and then under displacement click displacement and bump and so that's going to give us a like the actual displacement instead of just the bump map we can delete our light and then add an area lights or not a spotlight an area lights and then bring it up and just light our model i'm going to change the power to like 500 with a size of five and now if we look at it this is our model so um, yeah uh, this is our model right here um, everything's looking good we have the snow on it um, everything's looking good for comparison what I can do is I can shift D and then duplicate this model over right here and then add and then click the original material and then do the same thing basically uh, control control shift T and then we can go back to our mega scans folder uh, wood log and then just find our textures uh, for some reason it is uh, we can just click a it'll only give the textures and then we can add another ambient occlusion node this is just to compare the textures and if we look what we can see is once this renders this was the original texture and then this is the new snowy log texture so in my opinion this adds like this is really useful um, for like snowy environments and stuff um, for pretty much anything if you have a model that doesn't fit well in your environment you can use mixer um, there's so much you can do a mixer there's so there's I can't even put into words how much you can do with that program um, it's it's free too if you have an epic games uh, account you can just like create an epic games account and then download mixer so that's pretty cool um yeah uh but thanks guys so much for watching all links are in the description as always make sure to subscribe that really helps my videos get out to more people but if you guys like the video then make sure to subscribe um leave a comment i always read you guys' comments and my name is michael from polygon island and as always i'll see you guys next time